Right. Good evening, everyone. All right. Um, we got something special that's um planned on today. Um, we won't be able to interact like we uh, did on last Wednesday. Um, and that's partly due to um, we having Wi-Fi issues, so we're using our, our cellular devices now. But I just want to thank everybody for tuning tuning in. Uh, we're going to try to do the best that we uh, best that we can to have those uh, those interactions and uh, make sure that we give you a chance to kind of socialize with us on today after the message has been uh, um, delivered. People still they're still going to be coming in, so we're going to have to admit um, um, admit individuals in as they come in. Um, at the end of the session um, about worship service. We, we will um, allow um, for questions or um, elaborations or fellowship at the end. So um, it's just um, good to see everyone um, to the best of our abilities. So um, hopefully on next, hopefully on next uh, next week, we will have our internet services back up the way that we that we needed to we've been having complications all um all week and we had we've had to use our cell phones but uh god always makes a uh makes a way out of no way so he gives us alternatives um so we're just gonna have you know just have a a, a good time and um it's gonna be another blessed occasion um i'm give my wife a chance to say something Um, well, first, I'll just start with prayer. So if you don't mind, would you please bow your heads? Father God, I thank you. Um, and sorry that we have to still, um, like, admit people. So could you kind of cue it out? Okay. Um, all right. So Father God, I thank you for um, for today. Lord, I thank you for um, everyone who is on, who has joined us tonight, oh Lord. I pray that you soften their hearts um, in, way, in a way that your word will go for and will be planted on fertile ground, Lord. I pray that that word reap an abundant harvest in their lives. So God, I pray that you speak directly to them in a way that they cannot um, harden their hearts towards you, O oh Lord. I pray that you give them the will to do what it is that you have called them to do. For it is written, it is you who worketh in us both to will and to do for your good pleasure, O oh Lord. So I pray that you just um, encourage us all in the way. And I pray that we move forward and um, Worshiping, worshiping you and doing what it is that you have called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. So um, today, um, my wife, she's going to actually give the message. Um, and I know God is going to do a wonderful work through her. These are humble beginnings. Um, I know God is, is going to bless her in a, in a way in which is just going to cause spiritual growth on an exponential level um we all have to start somewhere on our journey we have to start somewhere on our journey but true worship and true ministry starts in our prayer closet where we are able to fellowship with god on a personal level so we can have that personal development and growth and god can speak to us so uh you know, it's just, it just a blessing. Uh, she's helped me with a lot of things. God has placed her in my life. She's more than just a, an administrator to me. Um, she's helped me to build my character um, as a man. Uh, God has increased my faith because the thing that I love about, uh, love about marriage or relationship is that you have someone who can hold you accountable for your actions. Before, it was God holding me accountable. Um, and um, now it's, it's my wife. There were other individuals in my life that held me accountable for things during that season. But now um, that I'm a grown man, now I'm establishing my own legacy and my own journey um, in God. And he has blessed me with a, a beautiful woman of God who's full of faith. Um, and yeah, she's grown so much. Uh, and, you know, I do whatever I can to, uh, to help her get to where she, where she needs to go. All right. So, Thank you, Pete. You're welcome. And I love her so much. You know. So um uh, first thing is I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a um 
with a scripture. Okay. Um, I'm gonna come out of Proverbs 25 and 27. And it's 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 dealing with overconsumption. All right, through these trial times of great crises, crisis, um, God God gives us the availability and the opportunity to come back to Him and to enter into His rest, so that He can teach us the things that we need to progress in this in the, in our spiritual journey. But um, a lot of a lot of things that hold us back in life is due to overconsumption. What is overconsumption of food? What is overconsumption of a specific environment that's not conducive to spiritual growth? What is overconsumption of technology? Anything that takes your focus away from God becomes idle. And many of us do overconsume certain things. We're drawn to certain areas. We're drawn to certain people. And God is just telling us, come back to him. Utilize this time to fellowship with him and so that he can invite his word and his spirit within our heart. But in order for that to, to be established, we have to cleanse our temples out. We have to fill our faith. We have to fill our, our temples with God's word. We have to strengthen our inner man. And the word is the only thing that can purify and, um, and cleanse us from our transgressions to make room for the spirit to fill us up. And that's what God, what God is trying to do. But when we're drawn to secular and worldly activity, that takes us away from God. And only the word of God can build our spirit man, uh, spirit man up enough to, um, to contest against the flesh. The flesh takes you away from God because the flesh lusts after the things of the world or the things that um, are according to the flesh, the things that the flesh is accustomed to, comfortable with. And if we're led by the flesh, then um, the things of the flesh becomes our comfort zone. So um, that's what this overconsumption happens in our lives. All right, so Proverbs 25 and 27 says, it is not good to eat much honey, nor is it, nor is it glory to search out one's own glory. All right, let me read that again. It is not good to eat, eat much honey, nor is it glory to search out one's own glory. So you're not glorifying God if you're searching out your own, your, um, your own glory. That means you're glorifying yourself. You're, you, you, there's still overconsumption because you're, you're consumed by you. When you stand in front of the mirror and you have um, unlimited admiration for yourself and that's taking you away from God, then that becomes vain glory. That's self-glory. You're glorifying yourself and your expectations is everybody else does, um, does the same so you become an idol. And God says, put no other gods before him. All right? Proverbs 21 and 17 says, he who loves pleasure will become a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not become rich. So we can overindulge in the festivities of this life and it can take us away from the richness of our soul. So we cling to the things of this life. It takes us away from the promises that God has for us that have been established in the kingdom. And you can only have access to the kingdom um, by having an intimate relationship with God and receiving his spirit and uh, salvation through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. How do we have access to the kingdom? Through his word. That's God's word. So I just wanted to give y'all those scriptures. Um, God said, um, and in this process that we're going through right now, uh, be mindful not to be consumed by worldly things because it can hinder you from spiritual growth and building a, a, a relationship with him. Right? So I don't want to impede upon what God, God is going to do through my wife. I'm going to give her the, um, the floor. God has a, a, a word on the inside of her that he wants to birth through her. And um, I pray that the angel, the angel of heaven stand guard over our ministry, over our soul, and that anything that, that, that attempts to rise against the word going forth, any affliction of fear, um, doubt, disbelief, I pray that God dispels it in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. Excellent. Good job, baby. All right, you all. So once again, I thank you all for tuning in. Um, it's just such a blessing for you all to be here. 
Today, I'm going to be talking from um, um, 2 Peter chapter 3. So just to give you all like a little overview, a little background information about um, 2 Peter. So 2 Peter um, is Peter's, as you all may know, Peter's is one of um, Jesus' chief apostles. So this is his second letter that he wrote, his second letter that he wrote to the church. And he wrote, um, he wrote this letter around a time that he knew his time was limited. He knew his time was about to be up. So he sent this letter um, to, the, uh, to the church at large just to, be, um, to serve as encouragement, encourage Christians to um, grow in their faith, and also to warn them about false believers. But more specifically, um, chapter 3 is um, it's talking about God's promise is not slack. All right? So I'm going to, um, and again, if you all um, have your Bibles or have the app on your phone or whatever, um, we're in 2 Peter chapter 3. And that's going to be the chapter that we'll be in um, pretty much the whole entire time. All right. So I'm going to read, um, start from the first verse. And remember, Peter talking to the church at large. All right. So beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So Peter said, Peter said here, he's writing this second letter in which, in which he stir up your pure minds. So that's letting us know that this is already like a state of mind that, um, the believers are expecting, he's expecting them to have in a way so that they can be reminded of what the apostles and the prophets told them of old. And it just uh, really made me think about it. Like oftentimes, like if I'm in peer in this context, it means uncontaminated. So oftentimes it's hard for us to receive what God desires um, to download on the inside of us because of our minds are contaminated. It's hard to receive the word. Like sometimes we can even have our minds made up about um, what it is that we want to do. We can know better, but it can be a bum, uh, not bum, but someone homeless on the street, a little kid or anything. They can tell you something that you really know is the truth because your mind is made up, because your mind is impure. You're just going to be set on believing whatever, doing what you want to do. So Paul is saying here, he's stirring up your pure minds in a way um, to serve as a reminder. And this here, it just makes, reminds me of something David said in Psalms 119 verse 9. It was like he was having dialogue to God and he was like, how can one cleanse his way? In another version say, how can, how can a, um, a young man stay pure? And he answered, he answered himself. Remember, he was kind of like talking in dialogue to God. And he said, by taking heed according to the, uh, by taking heed according to your word. So David is saying, you can stay pure by taking heed to God's word. So and you can do all you can do all that reading, you can go to church and do all that shouting, but if you're not applying what it is that God has already told you to do, if you're not applying what it is that you've already read, then I mean it's pretty much in vain. Like your mind is still going to be pure. God is not his spirit is not going to continuously dwell in an unclean temple. So you have to make sure your state of mind is it is just pure just pure in Christ, but continuously focus on the word. All right. Um, so pretty much the more you accept the word, consume and consume it, the more, and also apply it is the more you'll be able to receive from God. All right. So next, the next one, um, the third verse, he's pretty much about to warn the um, Christians, the believers about the last days. He says, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust and saying, where is this promise of, of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Paul, Peter is saying in the last days, and, and this reminds me of my youth. I remember when like tragic um, times would happen, people would be saying things like, we're living in our last days. These are our last days. And I would be scared. I would be scared as if like, it's another event that had to transpire before um, it to be the last day. So it kind of scared me. But little did I know was when after Jesus' resurrection and he ascended to heaven, that began the last day. So we've been living in the last days since Peter, Paul, all of them, since Jesus went back to heaven. 
right now we're work, waiting on the last day, the day of judgment. So know that we're living in the last days already. All right. So again, he says, scoffers will be saying things such as, where is this promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, I'm totally guilty of that. Totally guilty. I remember um, having this mindset more specifically when I was in high school. Um, I would just I always knew like becoming saved and stuff was like the right thing to do. But, you know, I was thinking like it's been over 2000 and so years. Like, I mean, times are um, have changed. I'll get saved one day. You know, I still want to drink. You know, I still want to um, fornicate or whatever, do all type of sins, all type of whatever that wasn't um, pleasing the eyesight of the Lord. So I just tried to rationalize it away. So Paul is saying, and I'm going to tell you what Peter, how he responds to this type of mindset, thinking that, you know, hey, you may still, you may die and Jesus won't return. That That's not the goal. You definitely don't want to have that type of mindset. Peter says, for this, they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the word world that then existed perished, being flooded by water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So Peter is saying by the same word that the heavens and the earth of old, like back in the days of Noah, God established the earth. He established the world first by his word. And that same world perished. It flooded out with water. So he's saying by that same word, God's same word, the world we're living in now is being preserved, held up by that same word, but is also being reserved until the day of fire for ungodly men, for the day of judgment, for the last day. So it's so important for us to just discern the time, like know what it, like what's our current state? Like we're in our last day. The last day, we don't know when it's gonna come. So just be mindful of that. And Peter go on to say, beware. And this is in chapter, I mean, um, verse eight. He says, beware, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise and so, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God is very patient and that's what he required, repentance. It's a lot of us, we can't rip, uh, move forward in the word because we're, re we're unrepentant. And also, not being repentant, that can hinder the way you interpret scripture because your heart is hardened. You know, I, and I say this because I've been guilty of this at one point. I wanted to choose which parts of the Bible I wanted to follow. So I had to start to say things like, Lord, okay, you say sexual immorality is just a sin. So show me why, you know, show me why, wh whatever it is that I found that I was struggling with, I was like, show me why this is so important. And he will reveal that to you. But you have to repent because that will hinder you. If that hinder you from receiving God's word, that's going to hinder you from interpreting God's word. And furthermore, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hinder you from applying God's word. All right. So Peter goes on to talk a little bit about that last day in which this world is being reserved for. It says, but the, last day, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. It's going to be so real when he returns. So that's why we don't have time to just be hold, clinging on the things that don't matter. Pursuing a life without God is meaningless. Pursuing um, accolades or whatever, pursuing material possession, all of that is going to melt away. It's, it, it, it's not going to matter. You know, Jesus went went to heaven to prepare to, to prepare a new place for us. You know, so that's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on a new body, all that. Me and my husband, we get tired of hearing, feeling our bones cracking. We're sick of this. So, you know, we look forward. We look forward to, to heaven. So so do not hold, um, cling on to the things of this world because it's all going to melt away. You know, your souls are uh, more important. So, you know, just stay in God's word. Let him reveal 
um, his eternal light to you so that you can just move forward in a way. Don't have a hardened heart. Have a heart of repentance, continual repentance, so that you can continue to continue to receive. Because if your heart is hard, I mean, you can't receive anything. You can't produce good works. You can't produce the fruit of the spirit. Only fruit, and the fruit of the flesh is death. And you don't want that. All right, so in the meantime, Peter said, he tells us how you should be found when Jesus returns. This is um, verse 11. He says, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Holy conduct and godliness. That means you need to be, have a holy conduct and be godly. You don't have time for um, gossip. You don't have time for just wicked behavior. You don't just have time for anything that just ungodly, anything that will separate you from God. And as you know, sin separates you from God. You, you're, you have to be focused on maintaining that pure mind so that you can receive what it is that God want, um, wants you to receive so that you can just move forward and applying what it is that God gives you. Verse 14 says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Without spot and blameless. That sounds like a very hard to do, but thank God for Jesus. That's what Jesus is for. You know, we, we thank God. He's our mediator. He's the one who reconciles us back to God. You know, he's the only way that we can be found without spot and blameless. But there's a catch. The only way, remember, the only way we can be found without spot and blameless is if we're in Christ. And to complement that, I'm going to read from Colossians um, chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. It says, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and, ab and above reproach in his sight, if indeed you continue in the faith. That's if, that's conditional. A lot of people want God's hand, but they don't want to be obedient to him, you know, um, in Deuteronomy, um, he says that it's pretty much curses, I mean, blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. I will bless you if you're obedient. I will curse you if you're disobedient. It's conditions. We can't pimp God. We can't always have our hand out. We can't always, you know, claim, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, but you out here living raggedy, you know? And furthermore, okay, it says, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard which was preached to every creature under heaven of which i paul became a minister so remember you can plead the blood of jesus please plead the blood of jesus over your life but you cannot be out here living raggedy you got to be in christ and guess what and when you're living in christ and you're reading that word it's gonna cut you up it's gonna cut you up that's what it's for it says um what is it? the scripture talks about um, God's word is live and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, you know, it's going to cut you. It's meant to cut you, to heal you. It's, be it's, it's, good. it's better to make a mistake and fall away in Christ than make a mistake outside of Christ. It's best to make a mistake in Christ because you can repent and he can just bless you a hundredfold, but you don't want to be out here making mistakes out of Christ because the enemy will tear you up. Yeah, God still would be there, but it's much better to be covered in Christ. All right, so moving on, moving back to um, Peter. Peter says, since you've been warned of this, you know all this. You, th this is verse 17. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness being led away with the error of the wicked. So Peter is saying, be watchful. Be watchful before you're led away, um, led away with the error of the wicked. Now, I like that it say led away because that tells us that being led away is nothing that, that's nothing that happens instantaneously. Being led away, it has to deal with like a series of probably actions that cause you to be you know, be led away. Maybe it's continuous ungodly conversations. Maybe it's 
friendships or relationship that you need to distance yourself from before you're led away. You don't have time. I, I used to, I remember when I was just in the beginning phase of my walk with Christ, I would be like, I don't need no help to backslide. I can backslide on my own. I can back, I don't need your help. I caught, I remember um, I ended a nine year friendship because I was sold out. I was, I was on a journey. I was, I'm, it's like I, I was working on something, but I can't move forward with that, the past, the past baggage that came from it, you know, and I grieved, I grieved that relationship, that, that friendship. It, it was a relationship, you know, I grieved it. But once I did and I let that go, I was able to grow exponentially in Christ. So what are you willing to let go of for your, for your salvation? Cause it's real out here, you know, back in biblical times, the Israelites, they had um, Kings and every, um, everybody that would just, oppress them but the word talks about our our weapons of warfare for today 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 i'm sorry are not carnal there we don't battle against flesh and blood but our might you know okay <laughs> we don't battle against flesh and blood anymore it's spiritual you know mighty with god yeah mighty with god <laughs> even to the pull down strongholds you know, so you, you have to be real with yourself and whatever that's hindering you, whatever will hinder your development in Christ, you, you don't have to let it go. You know, it is, it's, it's choose this day who you're going to serve. You're going to serve God or you're going to serve Satan. Cause if you out of Christ, Hey, Satan's your father. We don't wrestle against like, yeah, you may have a sister, brother, cousin or whatever, but if they're not in Christ there, these spirits are, they can be easily possessed by these spirits who you're up against. So you don't have time for that. So if that comes, but you having to separate yourself in order that you can just move forward in him, by all means, do what you got to do. Because your life is on the line. Your soul is on the line. It's not about, it's not even about you anyway. This is kingdom business. And how my mind is set up and how your mind have to be set up, anybody can get it. Brother, cousin, sister, mama, grandmama, Brother, it don't matter. Anybody can get it when it comes down to your soul salvation. Don't let nobody, I got this from my husband, don't let nobody take your crown. Is that scripture? Yes. Don't let nobody take your crown. You know, don't worry about these material possessions. These, you know, I, 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 I want my crown. I want my crown in heaven. All right. So Peter ended this um, letter with a charge. He says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. He's encouraging them to grow in Christ. You got to keep moving. You got to keep going. You cannot stop. And, you know, along the way, doing the right thing is hurt. But just keep it real, God. Be like, Lord, I really want to pop off. But show me why this, just, you fight my battle. You're my, you say you're my avenger. You fight, you fight my battle. The word also talks about how you got to give way to wrath. You got to give God some room to do his thing, to fight your battle. You ain't always got to fight for yourself. And when he do it, guess what? You come out looking good. Your character's still intact. And that's what the enemy want to do. He want to take your crown. He want to demolish your character and all that. Don't, mm -mm. you let the Lord fight your battles and you remain in Christ. He will put you up on game. Some of you all probably hate that, you know, pop off and just really feel bad that a person took you there. Like, Lord, why she make me have to go off on her like that? I've been there. But you just got to give room to rest and let the Lord work, out, work it out for you. You know, so I'm just going to end. Just like um, Peter just charged the church, the entire body of Christ. And like he's in, um, charging you right now to just grow in the Lord and Savior, you know, um, Jesus Christ. And also, I just want you to um, think about this perspective. Like, like I said, the word of God, it, it cuts sometimes, it hurts. Sometimes you're going to be reading the Bible and you're going to be like, when I, I know I'm guilty of this in the past. Well, even now, it kind of is convicting. You know, when the Lord talks about the wicked shall perish and the um, righteous shall be preserved. And I feel like, Lord, with all this you're saying, I, it's like I'm lining up on the side of the wicked, you know? So I want to be for sure on the side of the right, 
righteous. So that means I need to repent of whatever is going to analyze myself, repent of whatever it is that's going on so that I can, so I can move forward and grow so I can know that I'm in Christ and I'm, I'm, I'm deemed as righteous. So just like our earthly parents, our earthly fathers has dis disciplined us, you know, and we still show them honor, love, and respect. The word says God chastens those. He's di he dis disciplined those he loves. He disciplined us. He disciplined those he loves. So he's going to discipline you because he loves you, because he knows that his discipline will pr uh, produce righteous fruit within you. He wants you to inherit eternal life. That's far greater than what any earthly parent can give you. So you just have to be obedient. Let his word cut you. Like I said, it cut to heal. It cuts to heal. But, um, so I'm going to end with this. It's one of my favorite. Um, I read this on like a Bible app uh, devotional one time, and it just always stuck. It says, if you're not willing to listen to everything God has to say, then eventually you won't hear anything he has to say. Once again, if you're not willing to listen to everything God has to say, then eventually you won't hear anything he has to say. So when you approach that Bible, pray first. Pray first. Get your mind together before you start to read that word and just, um, just take on the full concept. Be like, I believe that um, what your word is true. Help me to receive it. You know, so just do whatever you have to do. Do whatever you have to do to just stay steadfast in Christ and to um, grow in him. But I am finished. That is all. I thank you all once again. Um, I really hate that we're on the phone because we really can't see everybody's faces right now unless we're just swiping through. So right now we're just looking at ourselves versus how it would be if we were on the computer. But hopefully that'll be working next week. They'll be coming out tomorrow. But um, so right now everybody is, well, do you have anything to say? Oh, uh, you did an excellent job. Thank you. Um, thank God for the word going forth. Um, if you still have anything on the inside that you need, you need to speak, then you can just continue. Because I believe that there's some souls on there that's crying, that's that's really crying out to God, and they wonder why they're in the situation that they're in. That uh, they have a longing and a passion uh, to seek an intimate relationship with God and to re and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, so they can have access. Um, to the kingdom. I really believe there's some people um, on here now that want to uh, um, give their life to, to the almighty and um, and enter into his kingdom. And, and I feel like they, they desperately desire to give up some things of the world. But see, Satan is just pressing them hard. He's hard pressing them to the point where he wants to take your, like literally take your life. There's some things that I've been through um, lately and my wife, she's bear witness of this and she's experiencing things on her own where Satan has uh, has uh, went beyond just temptation. He's went beyond just temptation to to, to take your life. He don't want you uh, to have rights uh, to the tree of life. He don't want you to inherit eternal life through Christ. He wants you to remain plugged up to a system that don't care about you no way. So this is why we're here. We're here to defeat the way of the enemy. The words say that Christ became manifest in the in the flesh in order to do away with the works of the enemy. That's our, that's supposed to be our purpose. We're supposed to follow Christ. Um, we're supposed to take up our, our cross. We're supposed to live a life that's, uh, that's holy and unadulterated. Uh, we don't have time for idol worship because we're hurting. We're in pain. It's times where I, I, I go to sleep in pain. And I know that it's the enemy because God can put an apostolic and prophetic life on my life and on my wife's life. And, and we have dreams and we have vision. So we're very intentional about, uh, about doing what we need to do, even on this platform. Your soul is hurting, then you need help. But first, first God has to deliver you through his word. He has to deliver you through his word. Because you don't want, you don't want us or a or, or minister um, to cast, cast any demonic spirits out, out of you and and um and they come back and return back to a, a temple that's not occupied by the Holy Spirit. They're gonna bring seven more with them. So you want to be sold out, you want to have your mind made up and your whole heart in this thing. 
most ministers just a uh, they they put on a show and a facade. Uh, they go to casting out spirits, and sometimes God would allow them to to do that. But they they harm you when they don't when they don't give you the word of instruction from God. First, God has to give you um, the word of instruction or His commandment. So when they, when those unclean spirits do depart from you, you have you have some type of sanctification, or God will become your stronghold and guard your temple. But if you don't have Christ on the inside of you, you don't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, then those demons are just going to return um, with seven more. So if 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 um, we cast out seven demonic spirits from somebody, and those spirits return to a, 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 a temple that's not occupied by the Holy Spirit, then they're going to bring seven more. That's 49 demons. You started off with seven, now you have 49. Now you're in worse condition than when you started off because some minister who proclaimed the faith didn't tell, didn't tell you what would happen to you. So you need somebody that can feed you appropriately, that can rightly sign, uh, divide the word of God. Can I just piggyback off that? Yeah. Um, really quickly, like even like you go to church and you get delivered, like he said, pretty much you do need instructions um, to like on what to do next. And really, it, it's all about you. You have to, for one, you can't go to church expecting the pastor to continuously to feed you. Like that's your meal for the week. Like, no, you need to be feasting on the word every day, you know. And that way, when you in church and the word is going forth, you're able to be like, well, no. The word don't say it that you know it has something else along with it with it you know so you need to don't go just to receive you need to also go to you know not just be the subject all the time but kind of like view it objectively in a sense not just to you know have the mind of Satan just cast you know just rejecting everything but you need to have the word in you for yourself so that your spirit can agree or disagree with something that you you hear. All right. So we just, we pray that God just in, invites his spirit into your heart. We pray that you just receive God's spirit. We pray that the Lord just send forth a word uh, that will stick with you, the word that has already went forth. We pray that it is planted within your heart as much as you're able to receive or much as you're willing to receive God into your life so that you can move out of this place of abundance, out of this place of um, enslavement out of this place of unrighteousness, the things that's holding you back from having an intimate relationship with Christ, the things that's holding you back from having an invitation into the kingdom of heaven, the things that's holding you back from using your gifts that God gave you for his glory. Um, I just pray that God just um, sends forth um, a spirit of conviction on the inside of a spirit in which we would not be able to shake because um, because Lord, we've been, we've been in a place within our lives where we just uh, we desire to just um, to seek your hand and not your face, oh, Father. But, Lord, I pray that your mighty hand from heaven comes down upon our souls right now and crush us so that we can know that only you can put us back together again. Give us a mindset of rights. Give us a kingdom mindset, oh, Lord. May your blood course throughout our, our temples, oh, Father, for those who desire you, oh, God. And, Lord, I just pray right now that this that we, we have an open in, invitation unto righteousness, oh, God, that we have an open invitation to have faith in you, O oh Lord, and not materialism, not worldly things, O oh God. Because your word say that an idle mind is the devil's workshop, O oh Lord. We don't want to have we don't want to have any type of um strife with you, O oh Lord. We don't want to become your enemy because the word say that we yet were enemies of God when we were when we were in word, when we were in bondage to sin, O oh God. But your word your your word states so Father that um a wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ, oh, Father. So we want to be true inheritors of Christ by living according to your word, oh, oh, oh God. Your word says that you, that you, that we are your disciples um, indeed if we keep and continue in your word. So thank you, oh, Father, for just um, teaching us about these things. Thank you, oh, Lord, for giving us a chance. We don't want your grace to run out in our lives, oh, Father. We, we don't want to misuse you and abuse the authority that you've given unto us. We don't want to lead others astray, oh, God, because we're hurting, because we're we're bound, we're in bondage, oh, Father. We don't want to hold the youth back from seeking you with their whole heart, oh, Father. We pray that, we pray that you send forth your warring angels, oh, God, to call 
those um, the elders that don't want to do right to release the youth back into your hand, oh, Father. We pray that the youth will have the authority, oh, God, um, through your word and by the power of your spirit to loose themselves from the constraints and the strongholds of the generation before them that did not desire to um, um, de desire to seek you in the way, oh God. We pray these things strategically, Father, for it is written in your word that the weapons of our warfare are not corner, but they're mighty with God, even to the pulling down of strongholds, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you touch somebody today, oh Lord, that you touch their hearts, minds, bodies, and spirit, oh Father, that you can fill them, oh God, with a word of instruction, oh Lord. Those who are lost, those who are singing, seeking you, oh God, those who are, are troubled in their spirit, oh God, those who are restless, oh Lord, those, those oh Lord, who know that they are in bondage, but they just can't find their way back to the light. We pray that your word enlightens their soul, oh Father. And we pray that the enemy would not I would not swoop in and take away that seed that has been sold on today through your daughter, oh God, through your prophetess, oh Lord. And we just thank you, oh God, oh merciful Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 All right. So you all, your um, your mics are muted. So if anyone um would like to say anything or your the floor is yours but in the meantime we are done and we just appreciate you all again for just mm -hmm. tuning in